Almost six million children have been born into war in Syria. In a decade of conflict, at least 25,000 children have been killed. Thousands of schools have been totally or partially destroyed. This is Ikra School in northwest Syria. A Syrian fighter jet has just dropped an incendiary bomb in its courtyard. Four students were incinerated immediately. And many with horrific injuries died soon after the attack. Why my brother? There has been no justice for those who were killed. Why my daughter? And the survivors live with traumatic memories, many with constant pain. Why me? There were false accusations that this attack never happened, that the victims had faked their injuries. I was there that day and filmed these images of students arriving at hospital just after the attack on their school. And I've come back to see what the future looks like for them and for all the children that have survived attacks on Syria's schools. Students were, were my kids, like they were my kids. <laughs> Abu Taim is Syrian, but we can't tell you his exact location or his full name, because he still has family in Syria and fears for their safety as well as his own. What we can tell you is that he was a teacher at Ikra school in the town of Uram al Kubra in the Aleppo countryside on the 26th of August, 2013. We heard sound of a war plane, like in the air. There were more than 75 children at school that day. Abu Taim started to evacuate his students from the classrooms immediately after the bomb struck the school's courtyard. And then suddenly when I, I turned around the building, I saw bodies. And those bodies were only black. <laughs> I screamed. I didn't recognize their faces. Everything is black, it's just a body. It was a very hard moment. <laughs> Those innocent people, those innocent, like, like they are kids. The closest hospital from Ikra school was approximately 10 kilometers away. It was a children's hospital run by a local charity called Hand in Hand for Syria. Have a look for that in a second. If we can get a Kenya so I can get some analgesia. I was making so a documentary for BBC Panorama about the plight of Syrian children in the civil war between President Assad's regime and opposition forces, and was filming with two British doctors when we heard a commotion outside. It's not the first time that a school had been bombed in Syria, but never before had the world seen so clearly the human impact. There was chaos at the front of the hospital, as the injured from Ikra school just kept coming. At the back of the hospital, the charred remains of those incinerated at the school. While inside, the struggle to save lives had begun. It's one of the things that haunts me till now, that we didn't have the stuff that we needed to treat those kids. We didn't provide them with the best medical treatment they could have. And that's really heartbreaking as a doctor.
A United Nations report published the following year says that an army jet dropped an incendiary bomb on the school that day, a violation of international humanitarian law. President Assad's Syrian regime has said nothing about the attack and denies that they deliberately target civilians. Oh, God. There was so much shouting and screaming that day. Incendiary weapons are filled with highly flammable chemicals that cause horrific burns both outside and inside the body which can lead to complications like respiratory damage and organ failure. But this happens over time. And that's what caused some of these children to die in agony days after the attack. Incendiary weapons are not illegal, but it is prohibited to use them to target civilians. Can you imagine how many children are terrorized in Syria right now? because they have been at the school that was bombed, because they've seen their, their, their fellow pupils, their, their friends killed and maimed at school. Just like these students from Ikra school, the injured arrived at hospital with clothes and skin hanging off them. Some here would not recover from their wounds. <laughs> In total, 11 were killed as a result of the attack on the school. In the following months, propaganda was spread by supporters of Syria and its Russian allies, alleging that this attack had been staged. A network of sympathetic Western bloggers joined in, claiming the images that I filmed were also fake. Those lies cannot erase the truth of what happened on this day. Here is one continuous shot that I filmed that shows the immediate aftermath of the attack. The UN says that the Syrian government targets schools to terrorize the local community, who then flee the area. And what parent wouldn't want to save their child from this? But what happened to these children? Where are they now? and how has one attack on one school changed their lives forever. <laughs> this is Ahmed Darwish. He was 16 years old. Like millions of his countrymen, Ahmed tried to run away from his pain. His new life is in Germany. But he will always have his scars to remind him of home. Ahmed received 50% burns to his body and has had eight operations. He lives alone in a world that seems far from Syria, studying mechanical engineering and building a new life for himself. But he is lonely and misses his family. They are stuck in Syria, and he is worried that he may never see them again, because he says that as long as President Assad remains in power, he will never return to his homeland.
Many of the children that survived the attack on their school that day have scars to tell their stories. This is Ahmed's classmate, Omar Misto. He also managed to escape Syria and lives in Turkey now. I told you that after we hit the first hit, I felt a strong hit. I felt a strong hit and I felt a strong hit. I was in the sky. From the level of the air, I didn't feel like a normal hit. I didn't feel like a hit. I just felt that something happened to me. So in this moment, I said, okay, we hit the first hit and we hit the first hit. Omar received burns to 65%. He has had 25 operations so far. He is never without the discomfort of his injuries or the pain of his loss. Here is Omar arriving at the hospital. He was 17. And this is his younger brother, Muhammad. He's 15. <laughs> أسمع إنه النوم ما هو كويس بعد أي إصابة فكان يطب رأسه على إجري فكنت أقوله إنه لا تنام. This is Omar's last memory of his little brother. The shot that I filmed of them walking into the hospital together. Mohammed Misto died eight days later. Omar will never escape his memories of that day, but he has at least left Syria and is able to move on with his life. But what of his classmates left behind? This is Muhammad Asi. He suffered 85% burns to his body. Muhammad lives in Idlib, rebel-held northwest Syria. But he dreams of leaving too. So he can have the career he craves and the surgery that he desperately needs to help heal his scars. But when he closes his eyes at night, all he really dreams of is that day almost eight years ago now. Muhammad lives in constant pain. He works odd jobs in refugee camps to support his family. 
Mikey's life ruined by an attack that some claim never even happened. أي منزل أبي يرتكبوها إنه مفبركة ما عندهم كذبة تانية ما عندهم شيء تاني يقولوا للإعلام أوراقهم كلها مكشوفة بدهم يحاولوا يغطوا شوي من الفضائح والمجازر ارتكبوها راح يحاولوا يبرروا بأي وسيلة لهم أي صوت بده يطالع صوتنا لبرا ولو عليه مؤامرة فبركة وكذب لكن هي الحقيقة اللي بتصير على الأرض وأكبر دليل هي الآثار الموجودة هلا النظام نظام ما بده يكون في البلد فيه تعليم ما بده صوتك يوصل النظام اللي أول ما ضرب ضرب المدارس أعمال كتير من الشباب وقف مستقبل كتير But there is still hope for Jad and Jawad They are getting an education but imagine how hard it is for their father Ridwan to send his sons to school when this happened to his daughter. Seventeen-year-old Siham was in her maths class at Ikra school when the blast ripped through the window. <laughs> Dr. Ruler is desperately trying to save Siham's life. <laughs> Siham's injuries were so severe that she was rushed across the border to neighboring Turkey and taken to the main children's hospital in Ankara. 72% of her body was burned. Her internal organs were damaged from the incendiary bomb as well. Siham's body was broken. Her voice was weak. But the message to the world that she wanted us to film that day was strong. <laughs> Her words just then were, we want this to end. And for her, it did. Siham died one month after begging the world to stop the suffering in Syria. That was almost eight years ago. <laughs> مين الممرض هون؟ طالع هون سجل لي على لي اياها على المونيتور. To think of how sad and angry I am and and I'm and I'm a mere witness. I'd like to think I treated her as best as I could as my daughter, but she isn't my daughter, she's his daughter. That's an immeasurable loss. Each one of those kids that gets maimed or killed, that's an immeasurable loss. And there were more tragic losses from that day. This is Bayan Khanis with her brother Muhammad. 
يا انا واخي استرجعت الالم بس بدي اوصل لاخر الاسعاف That's Dr. Salia Hassan in front of Muhammad and Bayan right behind applying cream to his burns. She never leaves her little brother's side. Can I help in any way? Line him, make sure he's getting fluids. Dr. Salia did everything she could for Muhammad. Can I ask any doctor to tell me that Muhammad has nothing? But to the end, Oh, this is heartbreaking. Uh, absolutely heartbreaking. We do have I can't go in his arms because his arms are burned. There's nothing on his arms. He died in absolute agony. Muhammad died two days after the attack on his school. He was 15 years old. I don't know how she lives with what she witnessed, but she was incredible that day. She was incredible. She was so brave. I have so much respect for her. Never forget them. I've never forgotten them. Never. And I never will. Bayan was with her little brother through all of his pain and suffering, and she still watches over him now. Ten years of conflict have left thousands of children dead in Syria, and the rest of the world has been unable or unwilling to stop it. Where there should be laughter, fear. Thousands of schools in Syria have been destroyed or partially destroyed in the past 10 years. This is a nursery school in Ghouta in 2017. The side of the school has just been shelled. A Syrian monitoring group say government forces were responsible. What in the past was inconceivable, like hospitals being targeted or schools being targeted, we have seen it. We have seen it in, in, in North Syria. And I think this is terrible because, of course, it's not only attacking the school, but the school with children inside or teenagers inside and teachers inside and civilians inside. So I think that, when, that, that this is, is a terrible thing. President Assad, with support from his Russian and Iranian allies, has regained control of most of the country. The battle continues to reclaim the last remaining opposition-held areas. Like here in northwest Syria. Hundreds of thousands of families have escaped their cities to take refuge here with their children. But the bombing and shelling continue. UNICEF verified 61 attacks on schools in 2020 that's 61 of thousands over the last 10 years. The Syrian government denies war crimes and says its targets are terrorists and military bases. Siham's father and brothers live in Idlib and no one knows the risks of sending their children to school in this part of Syria more than he does. But he is determined to make sure that his sons get the education that they deserve. This is a normal school day in Idlib earlier this month, until the aircraft early warning alarm sounds. After 10 years of conflict, the children know exactly what to do. Across Syria, more than 25,000 children have been killed. The people here believe 
that the West has let them down. This war has taken the life of Bayan's little brother and so many other children. ما بلوم حدا غير النظام السوري يلي هو يلي هو كان سبب قتل أخي زملائي الطلاب ما كان زنبون شيء هنا بس طلبة علم أنا بتمنى إنه بس تتحقق العدالة يتجازى اللي كان السبب لكن نتمنى إنه يتجازى بالدنيا قبل الآخرة